Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome to a new episode of the Sprint to Glory. This time, we are going to Spain, guys, and we're taking things to the next level as we take on the challenge of Deportivo La Coruña. By the way, what a name for a club. But the rules are on your screen right now, my friends. You can only make transfers from the same nation, league, and free agents. You can only buy players 23 or under in September 29 and every game has to be simulated until the final game of this episode and no financial takeovers and Deportivo La Coruña is ready so let's get straight into the sprint to glory boys this team was suggested by you guys in the comments down below so do the same for the next episode let me know which nation slash league we should be going for next time around and most importantly like this video let's try and get this to 3000 likes and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on to never miss out on any of these episodes as we take a closer look into our starting lineup after we have picked the preseason tournament which is worth 5 million we do have a decent squad you know Emre Cholak in that camp position the highest rated player for our team 75 rated we do have some decent players in the starting lineup as well this Montero for example the man with the glasses on the picture he is a decent talent but the big issue with this team is that it has too many players that are loaned in in the first season a bunch of the players that I was personally most interested in sadly are loaned in Aketje by the way 72 rated some people might remember from my um, athletic Bilbao career mode back in the day uh, we used to have him and uh, now he's playing at Deportivo La Coruña it seems and we do have a lot of people on the reserves as well but the team isn't as full as some of the other teams so it's going to be quite easy to get rid of the dead wood and we're starting off with a transfer budget of 7.8 million which immediately gives me hope because I know okay I can work with this I can bring in some decent talents and most importantly I want to let you guys know that in this episode, I tried my best to not do as many pre-contracts. So I kept it to a maximum of one pre-contract per season because some of you guys didn't like the fact that we used too many pre-contracts in the past. But those are the tools that the game gives us. So sometimes you just got to use them to your advantage. But right here, you can just see that a lot of players have 11 months left on their contract. The goalkeeper, Jovanovic, who is the backup goalkeeper. Kone, who is in the starting lineup at the moment as our striker, he is on loan. Um, Molejo, who is actually a decently talented player, sadly, is also on loan. Nolas Coin is another player that is in that centre-back position that could have potentially remained in the starting lineup for us, but won't. And Montero, who is a talented centre-back, is another one that's going to leave. And Agbo, same for him. So all of these players after this season are going to leave us. So I had to go ahead and bring in a backup goalkeeper that could potentially become our main goalkeeper goalkeeper as soon as that lone goalkeeper does leave us and Altube was my first option 460,000 is what Real Madrid are asking for and we're gonna pay that because the goalkeeping position is incredibly important in a sprint to glory the defense is more important than the attack because that is what gets you titles and trophies at the end of the day so Altube signs the contract and he joins in now he is 63 rated don't get me wrong that is too low rated even for a Segunda División team, but we're going to keep working on that man and we're going to bring in some of the biggest talents in Spanish football already. Eric Garcia, 2.2 million for the Manchester City talent who potentially is going to get a lot more playtime in the future now that they might be banned from the Champions League. 68 rated, 18 years old, some really good stats on this young man, decent jumping on him, good aggression, just really well balanced as a centre-back, has everything that you want him to have and if he keeps on improving on these stats, he could be a world beater. So with that, we have replaced Montero, who was going to be away from our team after the first season due to his loan. So we also accepted some of the offers, of course, trying to get rid of of some of the um, players that just were not good enough or were not about to get too much play time. Gomez right here is 30 years old, so we let him go. And at the same time, we have let go of Vale 
for 6 million. A player that was in our starting lineup, but 6 million was a good amount. And I do believe Vale wasn't uh, one of the youngest players in this squad. So Sanse. Now, guys, this is huge. This guy is going to remain in the team until the end. I'm, I'm telling you right now, okay? So keep an eye on him because he is the surprise of this sprint to glory. So this is potentially one of the biggest signings that we make in this episode. So keep an eye on this young man because he is actually massive. So he comes into the squad at a 71 rating, 19 years old, 4 star, 4 star, everything that you want in a center attacking midfielder slash center midfielder. So for that reason, I was happy. But his physicals aren't that great and his um, defending isn't that great. But I wanted to use him as a playmaker in that CDM slash center mid role. Now, we were also going for another Real Madrid player and this time it was Hernandez another center back that I wanted to bring into the team because I knew that my center back pairing after this season will be leaving me so Hernandez was a great option Eric Garcia and Hernandez next to each other could continue to grow season after a season and um, hopefully it's going to be a partnership for the future so Hernandez comes in at a 69 rating again incredibly well balanced player who possibly could be playing easily in the CDM position seeing just how well his stats are distributed and he even has the long shot taker trait which can be quite useful in simulations but we were looking for another defender again focusing completely on the defense at the moment bringing in a right back named Appa who is 19 years old and is able to join us for 1.9k in his wages not the best of haircuts he'll probably work on it but for now he joins into the squad 19 years old 5 foot 7 84 acceleration 84 agility good sprint speed as well and some decent stand tackle and slide tackle to go along with that so we are covering our tracks for the next season and making sure that we bring in good defenders but it was time for an attacker moha is the one that we're going for for two million this man is seeming like a decent talent and i'm happy to bring him into the squad to play down those wings for us and he is coming in at a 68 rating left mid or right mid is where he can play and he has good acceleration and all that stuff good dribbling and a decent sharp power as well so i was excited to bring in that five foot eleven dribbler into the team and we continue to accept offers we accepted offers for Kobo but we rejected an offer for Boveda because I really didn't see a reason to sell him there but then we got an even better offer which then again I had to accept because we had two decent right backs in our team that could replace him on the 67 rating both of them being talents 4.2 million still left in the budget as I realized that we have Roland in the team who is out on loan 8.5 million is his value now I could get him back into the team and straight away just make sure that we have a great player in that cam slash striker role but what i wanted to do was to use that money because he's 26 years old his value is not going to go up so we decided to bring him back and put him onto the transfer list and at the same time jimenez has already gone down by minus two okay we're currently in the january month so he has gone from 74 to 72 because he's 36 years old i believe and i'm asking for 10 million from trabzon because they've already bought boveda and now they're going for roland which i find quite interesting seems like trabzon is a big fan of deportivo la coruña maybe they're following us because we do have a turkish player in our team in emre cholak campuzano is the striker that i want to bring in right now never heard of this guy but for now i think he was our best option someone that is on the brink of getting to the 70 rating and that could potentially take his skills to the next levels in these upcoming months and become an absolute beast of a striker now actually he comes in at a 71 i thought he was 68 for some reason but he is a 71 rated player right now with decent finishing on him good shot power as well i was really happy to bring him into the squad only 22 years old at that point and we didn't stop there boys we needed more 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 on the attack Okay, this time around, we're offering 6.2 million for Diego Lainez, who can play on both of the wings and in the cam position. The Mexican is about to join into our team. We're currently offering him the wages of 10K, and uh, luckily, he will accept it. And with that, one of the biggest signings of this career mode has just been made. It is a 6.2 million offer for a 73 rated midfielder with 
great pace, agility, balance, and of course, ball control and dribbling as well. Um, being a quite small player, he has some amazing dribbling on him and the speed dribbler tra trait along with the four star weak foot, I believe. And at the same time, while we were signing players, Soma, our centre back, was bought for 3.6 million on his release clause. Now, in the first season, our team managed to get into the ninth position with 71 points while we were seven points away from the playoffs for promotion. So that was a good way of kind of understanding where our team is standing. Campuzano on a 72 rating now. Lainez went up to a 74. Um, Shibasaki and Bergantinos in that midfield were quite decent for us. Garcia has gone up to a 70. Hernandez has gone up to a 71. So plus two on both of those center backs, which is good to see. And then we did have some decent players on the bench as well who were getting plenty of playing time but the most important thing that you guys should know is that the players that were in on loan are just about to leave us now we can take a closer look at the growth in our team 74 rated sansei now at 12 million in value so immediately he is showing that he's going to be a big part of this career mode and lots of growth happening as well. Our goalkeeper went up by plus four. Moha, the man that we signed, went up by plus four as well. Two of the players that were out on loan, Molejo and Montero, have gone up by plus three. So happy for their original clubs. Mujahid and Apa both went up by plus three, going up to a 70 rating and showing some competition for that right back position in our team. And Hernandez and Garcia going up by plus two, just showing that they do have the potential to get to a decent rating in the future but it wasn't the greatest of seasons for us in terms of the placing in the league so we needed to take the next step go into the next season season number two starting right now with five million in the preseason tournament potentially but 12 million in the budget for sure with a 48 manager rating i had to turn things around immediately so I wanted one big signing. I wanted the man that is going to be on the thumbnail. I wanted the man that has just been added into FIFA. Ansu Fati. It was time to bring him in. 13.5 million was the offer. And it's the biggest transfer we have made so far. But trust me. It's a good one. Ansu Fati, I'm so happy to bring him into the squad. He's now coming in for the transfer talks. And of course, he is going to join us for 15K in his wages. 43 million in his release clause. Hopefully, no one will trigger that clause for us. And I'm happy to shake his hand right now because I'm just so excited to know that he's going to play alongside Sanse and Cholak in the future. Uh, we do have Ansu Fati right here with a 76 rating, 90 acceleration 89 agility great dribbling stats overall and just an all-round amazing attacker with the outside of the foot shot trait which i find extremely extremely important now mujahid gets an offer he is going to leave us and also merino is going to leave us and what i'm realizing throughout this entire career mode is there's a theme going on turkish teams are buying all of our players but I don't mind. For once now, it's a Spanish offer coming in for Keko, who's now 28 years old. We're genuinely just selling, selling, selling. We want to change this team for this season. And even Emre Cholak has to suffer under that 5.8 million. We do accept for him. But we wanted to spend that money wisely. And we do not stop right there. A 7.2 million offer for Aketre, who is leaving us to go to Turkey as well. And at this point... We wanted to bring in another big talent, another Barcelona beast. After bringing in two Real Madrid players, now it is time to bring in two Barcelona players in this season. Eight million for Puig and this man is hopefully going to carry our midfield for years and years to come. So he signs immediately and uh, I'm just super excited to see him in the squad. 74 rated, 20 years old, 5 foot 7 tall with some great passing and dribbling abilities but clearly is lacking physicals and defending. But I did still put him into that CDM position alongside Sanse because I just felt like in these games they could do really well alongside each other and Tellez was the next one that I wanted. It is not Alex Tellez, 
but it's another one that might be a good left back. So we do bring him in from Valencia for around 4 million and he seems to just complement our defense already. Great rating, 73 rated and really good all-round stats. Just one of those left backs that could potentially play in midfield as well if he wanted to or play down the wings as an attacking player. And in this season, boys, we got into the playoffs 2-2 and 1-1. One, one. Did we make it through though? Yes, we did. 3-3 three, three on away goals. We have made it through and we have been promoted to La Liga in our second season. We have made it there. So season three will begin in La Liga. Campuzano went up to a 75, Ansu Fati up to a 79, Lainez up to a 77, Puig and Sonse growing nicely, Sonse now at a 78, Puig on a 77, Garcia and Hernandez growing alongside each other up to a 73 and you can just tell that our bench and the reserves were shrinking down and down, our manager rating still at a 49 but luckily due to getting promotion we have kept our job. Campuzano clearly the best player in the attack at the moment alongside Sanse, who has some really good scorer points on him throughout the season. And in terms of growth, there are some big players in here, boys. Sanse went up by plus four, up to a 78. Campuzano by plus three. Fati plus three. Lainez plus three. Puig went up by plus three. Vallejo, the man that belonged to the initial squad that we had, has gone up by plus three as well. As I said, that man has some potential on him. And Garcia and Hernandez, as I said before as well, growing along nicely. And in terms of value, Sanse is the one 22.5 million 5.5 million ahead of Ansu Fati and talking about millions it was time for season three and it's a pre-season tournament which hopefully would bring in a bunch of bags but at the moment the issue was every single season so far we have picked these pre-season tournaments but we have never won them so never did we get the full amount of these pre-season tournaments but this time we are going for 5.3 mil in a budget of 30 2.7 million now that's what i'm talking about boys no pre-contracts yet but it was time to go for some big players pedro porro is the man that i'm going after and i'm offering them appa the man that we had brought in into the squad and i'm offering appa plus 9 million which is an offer they cannot resist pep guardiola wants appa in his team he sees potential in him but i see a lot more potential in pedro porro who is joining our squad to play in that right back position that is going to be a nice player to have alongside hernandez and garcia comes in with the highest rating of the defense 77 rated amazing pace on this man good stamina as well which is of course very important good ball control and dribbling another one of those smaller fullbacks that is just quality on the ball as well so i'm happy to bring him in and we went for another one a talent that i didn't even know of before i started this sprint to glory but pedri apparently is one of the biggest talents in La Liga up to 89 potential 10.6 million is what we paid for him after bringing in Ansu Fati it was time to bring in Pedri. Ansu Fati would move to the right and Pedri would come in down that left midfield spot with a 77 rating. Really good stats on him as well. Amazing in terms of dribbling. And of course, he has that pace as well to abuse it down the sidelines. Now, Shibasaki, it was time to let him go after a couple of seasons. Bordal, the same goes for him. And we had a massive offer for Lainez, but this time we rejected it. We got another offer though for Ruiz which we did accept because that man could leave our squad since Centelles was covering that left back position now at this point we're shaking hands with a couple of free agents yes two free agents the first ones of this uh, series of this episode are coming in right now Faye is a goalkeeper we needed that because we didn't have a backup goalkeeper for our main man in the team when he gets injured we do need someone to cover him and we also brought in Guehi who seemed like a decent talent to kind of make sure that we have some depth on the bench in the future and maybe some more money to be made off of free agents. Vallejo now coming in with a loan offer for him. We had to let him go because the issue is he was unhappy and he was trying to force his way out of the team. Now, I knew that I needed a better goalkeeper in this league. Our goalkeeper was 70 rated. That's not good enough. 11 million. 
I paid for Sivera and this man is going to take our goalkeeping position to the next level the most important position in the team has now been upgraded big time from a 70 up to a 77 that my friends is what I call an upgrade and Sivera is coming in at six foot tall which really is a bit small for a goalkeeper but hey it's fine I think Icar Casillas wasn't too tall either so I'm happy to bring in this man into the team 24 years old at the moment and uh, um, should be a quality signing for the future now Sanchez has been loaned out because for some reason this man was playing a lot of games in a camp position so I had to let him go to make sure that the higher rated players were playing the games and now we wanted to strengthen that center back position even more yes we did have Eric Garcia we did have Hernandez but I needed higher rated players now so Joaquin is the man that I'm going after for 10 million plus a player from our reserves and that deal went through very very smooth so Joaquin now joining into the squad with a bunch of pace with great jumping great strength good aggression just a solid center back all around immediately took the captain's armbands onto himself Hernandez has been replaced because he is a bit older than um, Garcia Garcia probably has more room to grow in the future so for that reason Garcia remains in a starting lineup and in this season we actually managed to not go down we came in 16th which is close enough to relegation but we survived which makes be very happy but Barcelona and Atletico Madrid finishing on 107 points and Barca in the end actually managing to get that trophy as we see Fati getting past the 80 rating so three players right now above the 80 rating actually four Fati, Pedri, Sanse and also Poro all those players have grown to above an 80 rating which makes me very happy and we had just one player on the reserves which just shows that we had to play the highest rated players and that is a rule of the sprint to glory that I kind of need to follow because if I have too many players on the reserves a lot of times too many low rated players just jump into games in simulations which I don't want to see happen but a bunch of plus threes all around but not as many as it used to be the growth is slowing down we used to have plus fours now we have a bunch of plus threes and mainly plus twos so you can just see that the growth is becoming an issue at this point so we need to make sure to let go of some players in the next season to bring in some higher rated ones and this season we actually get to take part in a preseason tournament that gives us 8 million which I definitely will take upon myself now season four is beginning and season four has something new for us Alexander Isak a player that is recommended to me multiple times throughout I believe every career mode six foot three beast Alexander Isak I was happy to try and chase him down because Campuzano is going out and 22 million on top of that offer for Alexander Isak was a really good deal for Roma and also of course Isak signed the contract he's joining into the squad boys and with that we have just found ourselves an amazing striker who is 22 years old and has everything that you want in your striker he has the strength he has the pace he has the finishing he has the dribbling and the shot power and even the volleys so I was really happy to see him join the squad with the four star week foot as well and after that we went after a couple of free agents three to be exact with you guys so those three came into the team and we have found a big one da silva sosa 71 rated big player right there also nicholson in that center back position decent free agent and the other one lopez vergara keep an eye on that man okay because that guy will remain in the team for a bit and he will grow exceptionally fast <laughs> compared to a lot of the other players in this sprint to glory so keep an eye on him as we bring him into the squad three free agents for a little bit more squad depth for our team and um, our bench genuinely wasn't good Vallejo only decent player at a 75 rating and finally boys it was time for some big signings so we had to go for Martin Odegaard it was time to bring in the first pre-contract and this one is for Odegaard and of course he is signing it he believes in this project that we are working on right now and I am extremely happy to call him 
a Deportivo La Coruña player in the next season. You can see that we had a bunch of wins and a bunch of draws, but mostly losses this season once again. So season four comes to an end with Deportivo in the 36th position. Uh, in the 36th position, that is not possible. 36 points. That is what we have in the 15th position. Once again, barely surviving relegation. This time, Atletico Madrid, though, have won the title. So Barcelona struggled a little bit. Isak remained at his 82 rating and what I realized with Isak was he was getting injured a lot throughout the season so that is a big issue as Fati grows to an 84, Sanse goes up to an 84, Pedri went up to an 82 and Porro same for him and a lot of growth on the bench as well Sanchez returning from his loan from last season so um, quite happy to have those players back because we can make some money off of them and in general just one player with over 10 goals and that is not good enough guys we need more than that and Lopez Vergara or Vegara sorry uh, actually going up by plus four in his first season for the team coming in from the free agents went up to a 71 Sansei went up to an 84 with a plus three once again that guy does not stop growing I'm telling you that much so keep an eye on him continue doing so season five okay we're now way way into the future 10 million in this preseason tournament and of course the main man that was coming in on pre-contract is Martin Odegaard now playing alongside Ansu Fati that is a big upgrade for us this man has the skills he has the dribbling stats he has the passing he has the shooting and the pace I was extremely excited to see him come into the squad along with 47 million in the budget this season had to be big this season we had to go for some massive massive transfers so immediately we went in into the messages and we saw an offer for Pedri and sadly I had to go in and negotiate because Pedri was unhappy 47 million is what we are accepting at this stage sadly I have to let him go one of the biggest talents in La Liga is forcing his way out of the club so Pedri goodbye but hey we are going for an even better talent. Rodrigo had a release clause of 47 million, I believe, and immediately I took that upon myself to replace Pedri. We are bringing in Rodrigo, again, one of the biggest talents in this league and clearly a player that I am interested in. And look at that three in midfield Rodrigo, Odegaard, Fati what a combination of three massive players now within our squad this man has so much pace so much dribbling and such good shooting as well and Sanchez um, the man that we loaned out and came back at a 74 rating is bringing in 8.9 million and we keep on accepting transfer deals for some of the players that we have in the squad to go ahead and bring in some big boy players into the starting lineup ourselves. 30 million I am paying for the release clause of Nunai Nunes. And this man I was very interested in because Eric Garcia somehow stopped in his growth he wasn't really getting anywhere so for that reason Garcia has been replaced he goes down to the bench alongside Hernandez who is now actually above him in his rating but Nunes coming in with extremely solid stats in terms of pace physical and defending and that's exactly what we're looking for in that center back position Lainez 66.7 million was his release clause and someone paid it so 66 million coming into the squad and we had to bring in a good goalkeeper and i realized that lunin i couldn't buy him immediately i had to sign him on a pre-contract normally i just wanted to spend the lunes uh, the lines money on a goalkeeper straight away but the pre-contract has been signed with lunin and i want it Paul Lopez, okay? Paul Lopez is the center back that I wanted to bring in to replace Joaquin, and Joaquin has been replaced. Paul Lopez is joining us from Atalanta. He was playing in that team at that point in a career mode. So, 85 rated beast of a center back 
with just such well-rounded statistics, unbelievable stats on this man. I would highly suggest you check this man out and bring him into your career modes. And guys, we went big and we were rewarded for it. Deportivo just about qualifying for Europa League football, which I am extremely excited about. Europa League football now is a part of Deportivo La Coruña once again, and that just makes me happy. And you can see the growth in the team. Fati up to an 86. Isak going up by plus 2. Odegaard up to an 89. Rodrigo up to an 89 with a plus 2 this season. Puig and Sanse, despite having absolutely zero experience in defending, they're actually doing a great job in the CDM position. And Sanse, 20 goals and 15 assists from CDM. Unbelievable from that man who has impressed me more than anyone else in this team and I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing his name wrong because I'm kind of pronouncing it French but he's Spanish so I'm sorry about that but I'm hopefully uh, you guys are gonna uh, be okay with that guys this team now is in a position where I feel very comfortable moving forward. Now we have Europa League money. Now we have just some big boy players in a team and a budget that I can work with and a goalkeeper that takes things to the next level once again. 85 rated, incredible, incredible goalkeeper in Lunin. Six foot four tall, makes up for the issues that um, Sivera had when he came in. And to go along with that beautiful transfer, now we have 111 million in the budget. I needed to spend it and I needed to spend it big. Alexander Isaac continuously was getting injured so Luka Jovic, the former Real Madrid player, now I'm going after him. 86 million is what they are asking for. I offered 70 alongside Isak and they accepted it. It might have not been the best of deals, but I knew that Luka Jovic would take our team to titles. And for that reason, I have made sure to bring him in. And there's some confusion about transfers by some of you guys in the comments down below. The players have to be Spanish or play in the Spanish league in September 2019. After that, they obviously can be transferred anywhere else in the career mode, but I'm able to bring them back into the Spanish league. That's the rules. And Luka Jovic right here a massive upgrade over Isak in my opinion, a plus five upgrade in a striker that has incredible finishing and a very good weak foot. And at that point, I wasn't done yet. I still had a lot of money and it needed to be spent. So Centelles is going out and Grimaldo, the best Spanish left back is coming in right now with an 87 rating. We are signing this young man right here who's shaking my hand to join into a squad filled with incredible talents and more and more day by day Week by week, this Deportivo La Coruña team is becoming quite the force in La Liga. So with this team, we have gone through a season. And boys, I'm telling you, it was a good season. We got into the finals of the Europa League and we won it on penalties. Such close margins. But in the end, they were in our favor. We have just won the Europa League title, which is such a... A big achievement for a team coming from the second division in Spain. We have taken things to the next level. But clearly we were not good enough to beat Barcelona or Atletico Madrid. Yet Real Madrid, the only big team that we have left behind us with only a one point margin on the same goal difference as well so we got really lucky there but we qualified for champions league football so europa league title in the back champions league qualification and a bunch of 90 rated players jovic 90 odegaard 90 rodrigo 91 sanse 90 that man has 85 potential. He has outgrown it by plus five. Despite playing in a CDM position throughout his career, the growth on him has been incredible. And I wasn't stopping there, of course. I knew that we were going for another season. I knew that I had to go for more. I knew that I wanted the Champions League title. 
that was a big goal of mine or the La Liga title and Jovic what a season 41 goals and 9 assists that signing was totally worth it guys and in terms of value Sanse is still the man killing it he is on 116 million in terms of growth he's also still one of the biggest players in the team he has a plus 3 this season and Vegara as I said keep an eye on him plus 4 in that season once again um, Torres went up by plus two coming in into that center back position has strengthened our squad big time and we were now in the big boy leagues so the preseason was giving us plus 10 million every time now as we go into potentially the last season guys we have one thing to do though transfers and Militao is the man that I want another Real Madrid player and I am offering Nunes plus 50 million which is of course a huge offer they want 54 I said you know what I have enough cash let me get this man into the team 54 million let's go Nunes leaving our squad Eder Militao coming in to play alongside Paul Lopez it was 87 rated Militao now on his 88 rating that defense looks incredibly strong Grimaldo 87 Militao 88 Torres 87 Poro 86 and Lunin at the 87 as well alongside of a bunch of 90 rated players in the attack this team had to challenge for the title there's no way around it and boys we made it to the Champions League final to play alongside Atletico Madrid in that match and that match will be played by myself in a little bit but let's take a closer look at the league table we have just missed out on the title two points to Barcelona who have just kept on being the force that they are in La Liga, an unbeatable force, but Jovic went up to a 91, Odegaard up to a 91, Rodrigo up to a 93, Ansu Fati about to get to his 90 rating, Sanse up to a 92, plus 2 in this season, Paul Torres going up to a 90 himself, surpassing his potential and becoming one of the best centre-backs in world football. Porro up to an 88 and Lunin up to an 88 as well. And a bunch of growth on the bench, but none of the players on the bench are actually good enough to take a step into the starting lineup. So the highest rated players kept on playing. And in this season, Jovic once again performed. Last season, 41 goals and 5 assists. This season, 37 goals and 5 assists. He is just keeping it up. He knows what is on the plate. And you can just see that the growth once again has been incredible despite the high ratings of our players in this season. Especially Sanse is the man that I'm personally most hyped about using in this upcoming match, which is going to be the Champions League final. In terms of value though, 130 million for two players in our team already. Sanse has been beaten in his value. But guys, let's get right into it atletico madrid against myself let's go okay guys here we are now with the champions league final with deportivo la coruña in the olympia stadion that trophy right there hopefully will belong to the team in the blue and white stripes rather than the red and white stripes of atletico madrid the team that has actually done quite well in terms of um, their success in the league we personally haven't won the trophy in the league but we could be winning the most important trophy of them all and that one is that champions league trophy to finish off the sprint to glory as always guys if you have enjoyed the video until now please make sure to hit that like man and of course if you are new to the channel a subscription would be very much appreciated as we go into this game with a team filled with unbelievable talents i can't wait to try them out so let's get straight into this matchup here we go then i'm actually quite excited to see how this team plays while the guard is already on fire that man is fast wow i'm impressed okay now i want to see jovic succeed i want to see players like puig show what they can do but most importantly i want to see what this guy can do who has risen in his rating at an incredible rate in this career mode sunset or sunset is the one that i really want to see um do well in this one and there he is on the ball currently playing as a cdm not really his position odegaard seems really fast on the ball rodrigo bringing it back into sunset is he right footed i don't know we're gonna give it a try he's quite tall isn't he rodrigo good ball here we go come on odegaard left foot Oof. 
Good first chance. Atletico Madrid still have an incredible goalkeeper in their goal. Oblak, of course, one of the best in the world. There we go. Fati again. Fati into Udegaard. I gotta say, Deportivo currently on the front foot. And we try again. That's a bad shot, though, I gotta admit. Atleti down that right with Hlozek. A Czech Republic talent right there. Could be a sprint to glory that we do in the future. But it's, uh, this Atletico team is quite interesting. And we haven't actually looked into their starting lineup, which is probably something that we should do. Let's take a look at their starting lineup to see what Atletico is looking like at this point. Joao Felix alongside Wesley. I believe that's the man from Aston Villa, if I'm not mistaken. Diata Hlozek down the wings. Fabian. Eggerstein in the midfield, Romagnoli Lindelof in the centre-back positions, Angelino really good left back there and then Oblak in goal with Simakan down at right back. Interesting lineup. I don't really see too many big names apart from Joao Felix so quite surprised that this team is up there right now um, but we're gonna continue chasing down that victory as there's a cross coming in and Lunin steps up right when we need it. Odegaard Odegaard feels incredibly fast, I have to admit. Jovic. Now gonna wait for that runoff. Ansu Fati. Ansu Fati. Can he get it done? He's gonna get it back into Jovic. Jovic on his left foot. Another shot onto the post. Rodrigo with the cross. People in the middle. Fati can't get it done. Atletico, I gotta say, I have been, or we have been, the better team so far. For those people wondering, yes, we are playing an ultimate difficulty, so this is not an easy matchup. I gotta be very, very focused in what I'm doing, but it helps that we have this much of a good team, and Sanse, let's go! He's the one that I wanted to try out the most, and he bangs it in into the top left corner with one of the most powerful shots you will see. We're up! 1-0 against Atletico Madrid. Get in, boys. Referee even threw his legs in the build-up. And then Sunset gets it banging into the top left. Let's go, man. I need to know how to pronounce his name. It, it, it really hurts me to kind of know that I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Joao now down the wings. Obviously, one of the best players in the world right now at this stage of this career mode. Should be like 93 rated. Atletico now, after they have conceded, showing a little bit more urgency down the wings. But our defense is quite solid, I have to admit. The, par the partnership between Paul Lopez and Eder Militao has been quite strong, and the fullbacks have been very aware of what's been going on here up, up until that moment right there, where we gave away a silly free kick. I believe it is Pedro Porro. Now, free kicks don't tend to be too dangerous in this game for some reason. They tend to overhit it most of the time. And once again, that was the case for Atletico. By the way, I really hope that Ansu never gains weight because then people are just going to call him Ansu Fati and that's not something he wants. That's definitely something that he should be aware of, especially later on into his career. There we go. Oh, this is nice. Pedro Porro, great dribbling. Oh, dude, that guy is very nimble in his dribbling. Like, he got past people in a way that I did not expect there. Will this be a 1-0 win or will Atletico return back into this game. I mean, it seems like they are gaining strength as the minutes go on. And now that we are in the second half, I do expect them to try and force their way through my defense. But Pedro Porro has been quite decent there. Diata. Diata. Good cross. That's a goal. I knew it immediately. I saw the positioning of Eder Militao against Wesley. And Wesley is an absolute giant of a man. And he just gets that into the back of the net. Which, again, I am not happy with at all. I should have defended much better against Diata. His dribbling there was actually quite good. Militao, quite disappointing, man. He needed to do better there. Wesley with the goal. 1-1, Champions League final. Atletico back into it. As a Liverpool fan, I need to do this for Liverpool, you know? I got really frustrated with Atletico Madrid and the way that they played. They were really just doing the right things. I mean, Atletico knew exactly what to do against Liverpool. Hopefully at Anfield, things will look different as we get through with Jovic. And Jovic scores! It's 2-1! And yes, boys! We are about to... What? Oh, it's offside! You have to be kidding me! It is actually offside. Correa now comes into the game for Atletico Madrid. Who came off? Lojek came off. So Correa comes down that right hand side for Atletico now as we try and run through here with the likes of Odegaard good passing Rodrigo Rodrigo creates some space for himself Rodrigo oh my god that's beautiful 
Really good dribbling, but in the end, the pass is just not good. Fatih. Nice. Beautifully played. Here we go. Sansei now on the attack once again. Can he have a big impact? Of course he can. Plays it across to Ansu Fati. Fati returns back into the middle. Odegaard. Odegaard again. He shoots and Oblak gets it away. Unbelievable defending there from uh, Atletico Madrid. As Sansei tries to get one more chance going, but in the 65th, they do get it away. Oh no, that's some decent attacking from Atletico now. Eder Militao once again beaten. Oh my god, what a save. What an unbelievable save that is from Lunin. And straight up on the counter-attack in the 72nd minute. We go ahead and try and score with Rodrigo. Rodrigo hits the post. Odegaard picks up the pieces, but he's not fast enough. He needs to take that directly. Unbelievable game against Atletico so far, boys. I am quite impressed. Oh yes, big steal, Rodrigo. Oh, they messed up down that wing. They messed up down that wing, and now here goes Rodrigo with some support in the center of the pitch. Odegaard. Odegaard brings it back. Jovic, that's it. That's the one. Luka Jovic has scored. Let's go. 2-1 against Atletico Madrid. Deportivo La Coruña is doing it. We are up there fighting against the best in the world. And we're about to win that big trophy, the biggest one of them all. Ansu Fati, uh, no, Rodrigo actually starting the attack. Odegaard, beautiful move. And then a great assist for him as well. Jovic, in a position like that, will not miss. Oblak and his defender tripping over each other, but we don't care. 14 minutes until eternal glory. And here goes Odegaard, looking for that run of Luka Jovic. Look at that pass. Let's bang it. Oh, we have done it. We... <laughs> What a goal by Luka Jovic. Incredible Champions League final goal. The goalkeeper would have not expected that. He thought we were about to run towards him, but no. We have an incredible finisher in Luka Jovic. He makes his run. Odegaard sees that run and Luka just bangs it on the volley. Oblak did not expect it. A beautiful strike. Oh. Wow, first of all, the strike is absolutely nuts, but I've just seen something that shouldn't have happened. Look at this. The pass is beautiful, yeah? But <laughs> I think it went through his shoulder. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. It comes through. It goes through his head <laughs> and his shoulder. And then he hits it. EA, come on, that goal should have never happened. Odegaard getting himself two beautiful assists. Clearly, the man of the match so far uh, goes to him. But also, in that midfield, the likes of Sansei and Puig have been quite impressive. Especially Puig. He's so small, but his agility is actually incredible when he's on the ball. So, I really like that about him. But Atletico, once again, trying to find a way through, but... This time, our defense is a solid one, and we are running, and we are running through, and we might get one last chance here. The referee is not blowing the whistle yet. Rodrigo, coming in with the cross. Oh, that's a bad one. I wanted to hit it behind Jovic for a bicycle kick, but we have just won the Champions League final, boys. Sansei is gonna raise that trophy. The man that was in a team for probably the longest time out of all these players, he is gonna raise it. Let's watch that happen. And here it is, boys. It is Sansei raising that trophy. The man who has carried himself in the best way possible. I have to admit, he's the one that impressed me the most in terms of growth in this sprint to glory. And it was a huge success. Taking a team that used to be successful to new heights again. That is what the sprint to glory is about. Along with raising talents that are just absolutely amazing. I mean, this La Liga slash Spanish squad had some incredible players in it. The likes of Ansu Fati, Sunset, um, the likes of 
uh, Paul Lopez being the Spanish beasts in this one, along with a couple of other ones that play in La Liga with the likes of Jovic, Rodrigo. But you can tell most of the biggest talents in this league are coming from the biggest teams of, uh, of the likes of Barca and uh, Real Madrid. But we do have a couple of decent ones in there, just like Sanse, um, who are from Athletic Bilbao. So quite happy with the way this has turned out. And with this one, I'm going to leave you guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Sprint to Glory. Hope to see you next time once again. Take care. Peace.